So we have a quadratic expression here, x squared minus 3x minus 10. And what I'd like to do in this video is I'd like to factor it as the product of two binomials. Or to put it another way, I want to write it as the product x plus a, that's one binomial, times x plus b, where we need to figure out what a and b are going to be. So I encourage you to pause the video and see if you can figure out what a and b need to be. Can we rewrite this expression as a product of two binomials where we know what a and b are? So let's work through this together now. And I'll, I'll highlight a and b in different colors. So I'll put a in yellow and I'll put b in magenta. So if you, one way to think about it is let's just multiply these two binomials using a and b. And we've done this in previous videos. You might want to review multiplying binomials if any of this looks strange to you. But if you were to multiply what we have on the right hand side out, it would be equal to, you're going to have the x times the x, which is going to be x squared. Then you are going to have the a times the x, which is ax. And then you're going to have the b times the x, which is bx. Actually, let me just, I'm not going to skip any steps here just to see it this time. But this is all review, or it should be review. So then we have, so we did x times x to get x squared. Then we have a times x to get ax, to get ax. And then we're going to have x times b. So we're multiplying each term times every other term. So then we have x times b to get bx. So plus bx, bx. And then finally, we have plus the a times the b, which is, of course, going to be a, a, b. And now we can simplify this. And you might have been able to go straight to this if you are familiar with multiplying binomials. This would be x squared plus, we can add these two coefficients because they're both on the first degree terms. They're both multiplied by x. So if I have ax's and I add bx's to that, I'm going to have a plus bx's. So let me write that down. A plus b x's, and then finally I have the plus, let me do that blue color, finally I have it as plus a b, plus a b. And now we can use this, and now we can use this to think about what a and b need to be. If we do a little bit of pattern matching, we see we have an x squared there, we have an x squared there. We have Something, we have something times x. In this case, it's a negative 3 times x. And here we have something times x. So one way to think about it is that a plus b needs to be equal to negative 3. The, they, they need to add up to be this coefficient. So let me write that down. So we have a plus b, a plus b needs to be equal to negative 3. Needs to be equal to negative 3. And we're not done yet. We finally look at this last term. We have a times b. Well, a times b needs to be equal to negative 10. So let's write that down. So we have a times b needs to be equal to needs to be equal to negative 10. And in general, whenever you're factoring something, a quadratic expression that has a one on the on the quadratic on the second degree term, so it has a one coefficient on x squared, or you don't even see it, but it's implicitly there. You could write this as one x squared. Way to factor it is say, well, can I come up with two numbers that add up to the coefficient on the first degree term? So two numbers that add up to negative three. And if I multiply those same two numbers, I'm going to get negative 10. So two numbers that add up to negative 3 to add up to the coefficient here. And now when I multiply it, I get the constant term. I get this right over here. Two numbers, when I multiply it, I get negative 10. Well, what could those numbers be? Well, since, since we, when you multiply them, we get a negative number, we know that they're going to have different signs. And so let's see how we could think about it. And since when we add them, we get a negative number, we know that the negative number must be the larger one. So if I were to just factor 10, 10, I could, 10, you could view that as 1 times 10, 1 times 10, or 2 times 5. And 2 and 5 are interesting because if one of them are negative, their difference is 3. So if 1 is negative, so let's see, if we're talking about negative 10, negative 10, you could say negative 2 times 5. And when you multiply them, you do get negative 10. But if you add these two, you're going to get positive 3. But what if you went positive 2 times negative 5? Now this is interesting because still when you multiply them, you get negative 10. And when you add them, 2 plus negative 5 is going to be negative 3. So we have just figured out 
we have just figured out our two numbers. We could say that A, and we could, we could say that A is two, or we could say that B is two, but I'll just say that A is two. So A is equal to two, and B is equal to negative five. B is equal to negative five. And so our original expression, we can rewrite as, so we can rewrite x squared minus three x minus 10. We can say that that is going to be equal to x plus two, x plus two times, times x, instead of saying plus negative five, which we could say, we could just say, actually let me write that down. I could write just plus negative five right over there, because that's our b. I could just write x minus, x minus five. And we're done. We've just factored it as a product of two binomials. Now, I did it fairly involved, mainly so you see where all of this came from. But in the future, whenever you see a quadratic expression and you have a one coefficient on the second degree term right over here, you could say, all right, well, I need to figure out two numbers that add up to the coefficient on the first degree term, on the x term. And those same two numbers, when I multiply them, need to be equal to this constant term, need to be equal to negative 10. You say, okay, well, let's see, they're going to be different signs, because when I multiply them, I get a negative number. The, the negative one's going to be the larger one, since when I add them, I got a negative number. So let's see, well, let's see five and two seem interesting. Well, negative five and positive two. When you add them, you're going to get negative three. When you multiply them, you get negative 10.